If you've struggled with a dough that sticks to everything, deflates when you turn it out of the basket, or resembles more of a pancake than a well-sprung loaf, then this formula, this is custom made for you. Because today it's time for a sourdough system reboot. And in the last couple of weeks, I've used this exact formula to help two of our home bakers in our Unchained community. And they've seen immediate improvements in their loaves. We're gonna throw out all of the complicated bits that can kind of muddy the process. And we're gonna focus. We're gonna focus on a sensible formula, a good bread flour, and a solid method. And that's gonna produce a really decent loaf of sourdough. Oh, and by the way, if you click on the link in the video description, you'll get access to this exact formula, which I'm gonna show you how to customize just for you at the end of this video. So I'm gonna give you the timeline for this bake, but remember that your timeline is gonna depend on your sourdough culture, your flour, and your ambient temperature. My dough is gonna ferment at 24 degrees Celsius. If your kitchen is cooler, then you can expect the process to take a bit longer. If it's warmer, then the process could go quicker. But don't get too lost in time. Observe what's happening. Smell, watch, touch to assess the process to the best of your ability. The more you do this, the better baker you'll become. There is no magic formula. This takes time and it takes practice. Right, I'm adding 263 grams of room temperature filtered water to my bowl. That's gonna help make this dough 65% hydrated. Perfect for dialing everything back, but creating a supple, manageable dough. I'm gonna stir in 10 grams of salt into the water and make sure that's dissolved completely. I've weighed out 431 grams of strong white bread flour, and I'm gonna add about half of it to the water mixture and then give it a quick stir. Now the idea of this is to match the consistency of the water and flour to the consistency of the sourdough starter. That will make it quick and easy to mix and ensure a thorough mix. Now I'm adding 96 grams of bubbly, vibrant sourdough starter, which is 100% hydrated. Don't forget, the full recipe is linked in the video description. Now your sourdough starter is ready to use when it's increased in volume appreciably. It needs to be alive, full of bubbles, vibrant and healthy. Don't be frightened to have a little taste of your starter and get to know it. It should taste pleasantly sour and slightly fruity. I'm gonna to link to my video about taste testing sourdough cultures below. Your starter is the foundation of the entire process. If that's weak, then everything else will be in danger of collapsing. Now once this starter's been blended through the water and flour mix, you can add the remainder of the flour. I've brought it together with a spoon and then I like to wet my hand and then continue to mix, gently squeezing and pinching the ingredients together. The dough is ready when it comes together in one mass and there aren't any dry bits left over in the bowl. We're then gonna cover this, we're gonna leave it out to ferment at room temperature for 30 minutes. Right, so after the dough is rested, turn it out onto your bench. And remember, every chance you get, smell and observe what's going on with the dough. Over time, this is gonna help you develop your intuition. Now, if you find you struggle with the dough sticking, lightly spray your worktop with some water and wet your hands. And then using our hand, we're simply gonna work the dough against the bench. Now, we're not trying to develop gluten, although it is gonna help. We're just making sure that the dough is well mixed and that sourdough starter is properly distributed throughout the dough. And then I guess after about a minute or two, the dough is gonna feel smoother and you can shape it into a ball. Bench scrapers make handling the dough 10 times easier. If you haven't got one, then get one. This is gonna get covered. It's gonna ferment at 24 degrees Celsius for one hour. Now we're gonna laminate this dough. We're gonna stretch it out over the worktop. But of course you can stretch the dough in the bowl if you prefer, but this is just my favorite way of manipulating the dough. Now don't pull on the dough as if you're hanging on for dear life. Listen to it, gently stretch it out until it resists and then move on to the next area. The dough gives us continuous feedback throughout the process. We need to learn how to tune in and be able to listen. Now you can already see how much strength this dough has developed already. And that really is because we're using a strong white bread flour. So I advise you to find a good bread flour with a protein content upward of 12%. Now we can fold the dough into thirds and then fold it up into a square. And from here, we shape it into a ball. 
the dough is going to get covered, it's going to sit out again at room temperature, in my case 24 degrees Celsius, to continue its fermentation. Now, since mixing this dough, it's been fermenting for six and a half hours at 24 degrees Celsius. Now, because this has only had one lamination, I'm going to give this a quick pre-shape. But here's a tip. Try to match the size of the bowl that you use to the amount of dough. I found that 800 grams to about a kilo of dough works perfectly in a 2.5 litre bowl. Now, if your bowl or container is too big, your dough's gonna get lost in it, and that makes it tricky to see if the dough's increased in volume. Now, I can tell you that this dough has grown by about 75 to 80% of its original volume, but I can also smell the fermentation. It smells pleasantly sour and fruity. The dough easily jiggles in the bowl, and that means it's nicely puffed up, but I can also see bubbles on the surface of the dough, and that tells me that the dough's fermenting nicely. When we combine all of this information, we get a really good indication of whether the dough is ready to shape. Now, the aim of this pre-shape isn't to degas the dough, but to even out the dough and to introduce some tension again. It's as simple as folding the dough up into a ball and then leaving it out uncovered for 20 minutes. Now, leaving the dough uncovered has allowed that surface to dry out a touch, which makes the shaping a little bit easier. The dough feels nicely puffy and pillowy soft, and you can see that we've still got some bubble action going on. So to shape it, I just flip the dough over, and then I lightly press the surface with my fingers to even out the dough. Then I fold over the two sides. Now I take that furthest end and I roll the dough towards me. I'm not degassing it, but I am creating tension in that outer surface as I roll. When I get to the end, I flip the dough over, and after tucking in the ends, I pinch the seam closed. Now this 65% hydration has created a supple but easily manageable dough, which handles perfectly. The dough gets a quick bath in rice flour and it's gonna sit out in a basket, which is gonna get covered and left out at room temperature to prove. Now normally at this temperature, my dough would take about two hours to prove properly, but today, for some unknown reason, it took three hours. And this is why we need to use time as a guideline but ultimately trust our experience and intuition to judge the process. Now the dough is nice and soft, and while it's expanded well in the basket, it doesn't feel like it's about to kind of pop and deflate. So now this is gonna get retarded in the fridge overnight, covered in a plastic bag. So because our dough has been chilling in the fridge overnight, it's really nice and cold, and that makes scoring easy. We don't need to worry that it's gonna deflate or spread out across the bench. But the dough is wet from the condensation on the top, so we just dust it with a little bit of flour, and then if we gently rub the flour in, we're gonna know if we've used enough. We need to make sure that this doesn't stick to our bread peel. But this dough turns out of the basket and kind of relaxes on the peel beautifully. And using a bread lamp, I'm gonna confidently score the dough. I'll make one pass, not too deep, just enough to give the dough a point to open. My oven and baking stone have been preheated to 220 degrees Celsius or 430 degrees Fahrenheit. The oven is set to bake mode, which delivers heat from the top and the bottom, but it doesn't use the fan. Now the loaf is gonna bake for 20 minutes covered and 25 minutes uncovered at 220 degrees Celsius. Now stick around because after we've had a look at the loaf, I'm gonna show you how you can tailor this recipe just for you. We've got a pretty decent loaf of sourdough here. It sits up high and it's nice and plump. It feels light in the hand. And thanks to that well-balanced hydration, proper fermentation and baking, we've got a really well-baked crumb. It's soft, it's creamy, and there is zero gumminess. It tastes mature and sour. The crust is crackly and the crumb is lovely and soft. All around, a pretty decent loaf of sourdough. Now, once you've accessed the sourdough formula for this recipe, you'll be able to make this your very own. You can easily increase or decrease the amount of levan to speed up or slow down the process. You'll be able to gradually increase the hydration as you get used to handling the dough. And then when you're ready, you can add additional flour to the mix or add some different ingredients just to spice that loaf up. You know, learning how to tweak the ingredients and create your own original recipes is really gonna help you master that sourdough process. So 
take the bull by the horns and give it a whirl. Now don't go anywhere just yet. Jump over and join me in this video here just to learn a bit more about baking sourdough at home. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.